Jimmy said he could handle this. Oh, he's from Los Angeles. Welcome to episode number 30. Woo! Dirty 30. Dirty 30 of the Let's Go podcast. My name is Justin. My name's Kelly. Here we are celebrating our 30. If episode <laughs> thirty, <laughs> if and uh, we're gonna start it off with the tasty beverage. Hey, to Kelly. Beers, beers, all kinds of beers. Black, white, Puerto Rican, Chinese beers. All right. So for those of you at home, if you want to hit pause really quick, mm. go to your local supermarket or well don't hit pause yet yeah don't hit pause we'll yet. tell you about the delicious yeah. beer then hit pause <laughs> then hit and pause. then you could pour yourself a, a glass mm. and drink with us yes but listen now all right so what we have here is we're gonna celebrate our 30 with uh stone brewing yeah we went back to stone for a little bit i just saw it and it was their 20th anniversary double ipa citronado food with some citrus hops Avocado flower honey. I don't even know Ooh, what that means. I don't know, but that sounds Sounds delicious. good, right? I like avocados and honey. I like honey, avocado, and citrus. And hops. And hops. <laughs> All right, you ready? I'm ready. We're going to do this, Kelly. Here we go. One, two. Here we go. It's definitely a stone IPA. That's delicious. But you got that You got that citrus bump right there. Yeah. And it tastes really get, good. Yeah, it's very refreshing. Uh Instant, like if I had to just say, like, oh, ready to go, I'd say let's go. It's yeah, good. It's let's go. For I would sure. drink it. Uh, it's an it's a beautiful summer night right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just got done barbecuing. Burgers, burgers. Wieners. This would have actually been good, good with the meal, but yeah, we were holding you know, off for you. We had to hold it out for the listeners. So it's a uh, definitely a delicious, uh, delicious, tasty beverage. You definitely get the uh, hoppiness of an IPA, yeah. but it's not as bitey as some of the other IPAs I've had. I would say this Smooth. is, I would put this over um, that grapefruit sculpin. Mm, really? Yeah, I would. That's a bold statement. I know, I know, but this is this is really good. Yeah, I you know I like what it. I've I've been hooked to, hooked on that we're not drinking currently, but <laughs> I've been drinking all week. That sounds terrible, non-stop. but not <laughs> not nonstop, just like one a night. But uh, Sierra Nevada made a, a, a goes. I think they're called goes uh-huh. style ales. G O S E. I would imagine that's goes. Yeah. Um, gauze. It's called gauze. I don't know. Gauze. Gauze. Goes. Geese. Geese. Goose. Geese. Gas. Goose. Yeah. Anyways, it's called Ultra Vez. Uh-huh. Mm, dang, it's so freaking tasty. It's good. It's like a sour. It's like sour, and it's got like a little bit of grapefruit and what yeah. cactus or something that it's got in it. Yeah. It is. It's really good. Delicious. It's, for me, it's kind of a sipper. Yeah. But, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm like saying. A, it's like, like a summer home, sipper, like, yeah. Mm, I'm going to have a nice tasty beer. I'm not going to chug it. Yeah. Hey, like if I had a left hand, I'd be I'd be done with that thing in five minutes. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that thing is really good. Yeah. Those, that, and that went fast. So that's two delicious beers for you guys. Yeah. Right off the rip. Yeah. But yeah, if you're thinking about passing up, I would hit, I would hit this up. Celebrate 20 years of Stone IPA doing great things. Yeah. I even know they were around for 20 years. I didn't either either. But... I did just find out that they have plans mm. to build a hotel slash resort what? across from their uh, brewery in Escondido. Really? That's yeah. the place we went to, right? Yeah. There's like plans to build build hotel, onto that huh? or something across the street to where there's going to be like a gigantic resort hotel. Oh, there's space for it over there. Yeah. That's cool. I Man. mean, I can imagine it because it's already world class as it is. You know, yeah. you got delicious beer. And their food is top notch. Yeah. And it's a cool little environment. But you want Brussels to sprouts? Up. Right. Tasty Brussels sprouts. Yeah, man. Put all the Brussels sprouts into a bowl. And, and put then, them in my face. Then put them in your face and the mouth hole. Good stuff. Yes. So, yeah, just so a little flashback to that. But. That's a little cool info there. Yeah, that's cool, man. And I also heard. Is there a timeline on it or is it just like, hey, we're thinking about it? I think it's like 2018. Okay. And I also read, or I could be absolutely crazy, but I thought. Lagunitas posted something about opening a brewery in Southern California. What? Near the nice. beach somewhere. That'd be good. Yeah. I'd love some uh, close Lagunitas, because I'm not going to Petaluma anytime soon. Right. But That's a shame, because Petaluma is beautiful. I would it's love amazing. to go there. My current timeline of life says no. <laughs> that sounds very dark. <laughs> my life is fine. It's just my current schedule is just busy. Can't. <laughs> His schedule. Schedule, not Petaluma. timeline of life. Yeah, ain't going to Petaluma anytime soon. But, but anyways. That being said. 
Enjoy some tasty beers. Yeah, very good, very good. All right, so moving on moving into on. some life. So I wanted to talk about a little bit. I got to stay at the Mission Inn. Ooh. It's Riverside. Riverside. Flare. Here, here. Going back to episode one where Riverside is the eighth coolest place in the entire world, right? That is true. So one of the coolest things about Riverside is the Mission Inn Hotel. It's historical. It used to be a in a mission <laughs> hundreds a hundred years ago or something like that and now it's an inn yeah and now it's an inn and it's a really nice place to stay um a lot of famous people a lot of presidents have stayed there they have a bar downstairs called the presidential presidential and, lounge the presidential lounge and they name drinks after the presidents that have stayed there Currently, and they have if you have the means financially to afford oh. their sunday brunch holy schmoly yeah it's about forty we bucks ahead. We did not ahead, have those means. <laughs> if, yeah, it's about forty <laughs> bucks ahead or something. But holy crap, man! Any kind of food you could imagine, and just a hundred percent tasty. Yeah, it was. Let me just tell you, I haven't been able to. I've stayed there before a few a few different times. Yeah, yeah of course. But I've never stayed there more than four days, and we were there like Thursday to Sunday, and um, it was really really nice to just kind of hang out, go to the pool. And then kinda I like actually kind of like a staycation. It was a staycation. Just side note: our air conditioning caught on fire. Insurance paid for us to stay somewhere. Yeah, mission in. Here we go. Why not? Why not? Right. If you have the means, I highly suggest staying there. But uh, yeah, it's it's just it just smells like eucalyptus oil. And, you know, it's nice. You get to walk to like little close restaurants that are downtown, which is just a nice little pop in the community if you are um, wandering around. Um, but I would say just. Even if you're hanging out in the hotel, it's really cool. There's just really cool spots to play. There's nice restaurants there. There's Dwayne's, which is on that high price tip. Yeah. And then there's Lost Las Campanas. Campanas, which is good. It's not my favorite. I actually my favorite is the Trattoria, the Italian Ooh. restaurant on the other side. Uh, I don't I don't hear about it a lot, but I think it's I think it's really good. Quite delish. Yeah, I get that, I get that. But um, yeah, the pool's nice. Um, it was popping. It was good, and they had a tasty, um. A tasty beer out there by the pool I ordered. It was like, they had a few different things you can order. And I was like, well, I'm not going to get a um, Dos Equis. Not, there's nothing wrong with Dos Equis, but yeah. I want something different. And they had a, um, what are those things called? They're the nuts that I don't like. A pecan, uh, some pecan ale they had there. Hmm. And it was good. It was like brown pecan something other, Mission Inn, like brand. And I had that in the jacuzzi. So I was trying to like make my back feel nice. Huh. And it was good, dude. Really tasty. And huh. I have to give that. A let's go. So if you happen to be there and you're hanging out by the pool, get a tasty beer. Get a ta- get that that brown uh, pecan ale because that thing was good. It was sweet and I was like, this is nice. It was a nice tasty beer. So, anyways, Mission Inn though, I would say it's a definite gotta go if you're able to stay here. It's nice. It's historical. It's it's got you know if you can stay in a presidential lounge. I stayed there for my honeymoon, you know, a few years back. Oh, the presidential suite? Yeah. It's not, Ooh, not the one, yeah. Sorry, not the lounge. <laughs> we just stayed at the bar. <laughs> but one of the presidential suites. It's nice, man. Oh, yeah. Really nice. But we got to stay on the third floor. I forget the actual area we were. But we were on the third floor this time. It was Ooh, cool, man. Nice third little floor room. swanky. Swanky, dude. That third floor is nice. So, um, great place to have a wedding. I saw a few. Well, I got lost going one <laughs> back to the room. A couple like, Hey, there's a wedding. <laughs> there's yeah. Like two different weddings going on right now. Um cool spot check out the mission and go to missionin.com book yourself a room it's a nice place to stay do it we're not being paid by them not at all but if they wanted to swing our way and say hey have a stay give us another rating <laughs> hey, have a weekend have a weekend we'll definitely do it they uh gave us a little bit of love on our instagram yeah mission in we are not gonna fight you yeah mission in you are a wonderful place and we love you we love riverside and we love the mission in bing bang bing bang boom. boom oh there we go so stay there i just wanted to like touch upon that a little bit yeah so Kelly, what you got for us, buddy? Um, I'm gonna go straight into some record reviews, I guess. Heck yeah, let's talk about Since music. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't really get a chance to go see any flicks this week, and you know, we'll get into. I revisited your... some old stuff. Yeah, but we, we can talk about that. We I, get... Well, I'll start with something I found that's a little bit old. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a band called Broadway Calls, mm-hmm. and I had heard them in passing, or heard of them in passing. And uh, my iPhone decided to go on shuffle, and I had a, a No Sleep Records uh, sampler, which is, a, I think, a, they're a local Costa Mesa record label. Um, and this band is on that label, 
And the sampler came on, the song came on. I was like, wow, I really like this song. This is really good. Mm. So I went back and checked out their album, which came out in 2013. So I'm a little behind the times. It's all right. But uh, if you're a pop punk fan, especially a little pop punk with a, a little bit more gritty edge, uh, kind of a raspy vocal, um, definitely check out Broadway Calls. Uh, I, I was definitely feeling their uh, their last record here. Um, second record review. Uh, well, Broadway Calls, I'll give it a let's go. Um, my second record review will be for Rival Sons. Oh, they are yeah. from Long Beach, California. LBC. LBC. Yeah, yeah. And they're currently opening for Black Sabbath on the road, which wow. is pretty rock and roll. Is that Black Sabbath like straight up with Ozzy? Ozzy, He's Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, you know, Bill Ward. Wow. The, 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 the gruesome foursome. Um, anyways... Uh, Rival Sons, really cool, kind of nostalgic rock and roll feel, um, a la Black Keys a little bit. They got that kind of grimier recording style, but yeah. it's, man, just really cool rock and roll songs. If you're just kind of looking for some good, feel good rock and roll, I'd highly recommend Rival Sons. Um, is it like a self, what was the title? Sorry, was it self-titled? It is not self-titled. The most recent record is called Hollow Bones. Mm. Real good. Um, I actually started going through the back catalog because I, I listened, gave that like two or three spins this week, and then I was like, oh, let's see what else they got. They have one called a Great Western Valkyrie. Um, I touched on that one a little bit. Same, same, you know, same great songwriting, great performance, great vocal, but still kind of a gritty recording style, kind of vintage I guess, has that vintage feel. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to give that one a... A straight up let's go in a half. I've been really digging on it um, this last week, last couple weeks. Yeah, I heard it in the Kelly was playing it in the car the other day, and I, I really liked it. It was kind of like, man, we should be playing pool and drinking a beer right now, right? And that's not like a slight. That's a good. That was like yeah, I thought yeah. it was good. It's not my usual go to musically. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I really liked it. It was good. good right stuff. On. Right on. Rival Sons, check them out. Rival Sun, straight from the LBC. Yeah. And if you're going to see Black Sabbath anytime soon, you'll probably catch the Rival Suns. Yeah, and they're fancy, fancy looking gentlemen. They are. Yeah. So if you like fancy looking gentlemen <laughs> and uh <laughs> that play rock and roll music. That rock and roll. There you go, make it happen. I want to add a little bit here. If I noticed a lot of the uh, bands have been following us on the Instagram. So if you'd love for us to review your band. Dude, like, take that extra step and email us yeah. a little link to something, and we would love to listen to your band, check it out, maybe give you some love here on the show. That'd holla, be cool. holla, holla. Yeah, and if you're local, maybe we'll even interview you. Heck yeah, that? man. Or even if you're far away, maybe we can get you on that Skype. So, Ooh. oh, yes. Technology will unite us. Yes. And it will take us down. Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Right. Skynet. Skynet. Make it happen. Look out. Wake up. Come on. <laughs> Eric Dyson. Don't trust that fool. Miles. Miles Dyson, sorry. Who's Eric Dyson? Miles Bennett Dyson. Oh. <laughs> I have no <laughs> trip. Like, <laughs> like, did you notice that in Batman vs. Superman, like Cyborg's dad, that was his dad. I did not know the that. The dude that was built was like working on his son, like, oh crap. And then that was him. That was Miles Dyson. Didn't know. Segway. Okay. Segways. Segway. So hey, I got to go see a show. Yeah. Yeah. So I got to go see uh the Deftones on August twenty fourth in the year of twenty sixteen. <laughs> year for those who are Lord. listening to the this maybe Lord, if you, in the year of our lord 2016 <laughs> uh yeah they could play at the first off greek theater if you haven't been to the greek theater in los angeles california i've been singing its praises forever it is a beautiful beautiful place and it's a beautiful it's outdoor it's an outdoor amphitheater it's amazing and what would you there, say kelly there are no bad seats in that place i'd oh. say gotta go to, to a show yeah, just there go and it was funny the ads here playing there they're like josh groban with Sarah McLaughlin. I'm like watching these ads. And I'm like, nope. And then they had like a <laughs> mariachi band show? that was going to be playing. And then I was like, oh, dude, Casey and JoJo. What? <laughs> Casey and JoJo's going to be playing? <laughs> I might go to that. Wait, those guys are still alive? I know. It was like Casey and JoJo and like, oh, I forget who else. My love. Yeah, a there we go. <laughs> it's actually going to be me and Kelly singing the hits yeah. of Casey and JoJo at the My initials theater. are Casey. There, that there you go. Maybe hey. it was you. And my name, my nickname is not JoJo. No, it's J Rocket. <laughs> J Rocket. Well, there we go. That we're not, Sorry, we're not street breaking. name again. No, my street name. Can't name the street name. Can't put that. Can't put that down on wax. Um, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's there's just Linda Ronstadt's playing and Melissa Etheridge. Ah, it's random stuff, but they actually have some good shows too. But the venue, anyone can play there. Venue though, stinking amazing. Yeah, it's great. I will tell you this though, 
So I was with my um, friend Brian and his lady friend Stacy. They invited me to go with them, and it was good. And they just said, "Hey, come with." So it was like, "Come hang out, go see this show." Out of the generous, generosity, <laughs> the generosity of their heart, and so I bought them a beverage. I'm like, "Here, let me just buy drinks, right?" And I tell you this. It was thirty six dollars for three beers. Oh yeah, it's no joke. Oh wait, and it was like it was piece. like a red solo cup, like amount of beverage, and I'm like, man, you guys, like, you know, it was I don't even know what it was. It was some type of IPA, but my option was that or like Coors or Modelo, and I was like, oh man, you guys are just, <laughs> what am I gonna do here? Work on that. They had like a bar outside and stuff. They had they had like a crazy like if you have a Mercedes Benz, you can park in the Mercedes section. Pro- <laughs> promo going on. It was like I don't know, but we actually before we get into the show, um, they purchased a uh, Greek theater tram ride to the parking lot, which to me felt like this is amazing. Like you park up up the street more and like a lot tram takes you, and you don't have to fight like any of that crazy like traffic getting out of the show. Yeah, that's Thought that that's, was rad. That's my once again my my only complaint about a venue is parking. Um, but yeah, but my only beef with Greek theater is parking. Yeah, parking sucks. But that's stupid. That's why I would say get that tram because it's cool. And then you're hanging out. It's like a little party bus on the way down and all the way back. You're like you're only sitting with fans. You know. Yeah. Like if you got beef with somebody, then they're just being a wiener. Yeah. But yeah, um, it was cool. It was cool. So let me just talk about the Deftones. Do it. Before I get there, though. Do it. <laughs> uh, we missed the opening band. I can't even tell you what the names. Is it something like Crying something? What? Uh, coloring something? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's probably on the back of the... I bought a shirt. <laughs> but I bought one of those bootleg shirts off the street that they sell for 10 Got for 5 because they sell shirts inside for $35. I'm not like a, hey, I'm going to buy a shirt at a show guy. But I was like, I will buy a $5 shirt. It'll probably like fall apart the next time I wash it. But whatever. <laughs> I was just... It was more of like a challenge. I'm like, I will... How much can I talk this guy down to? He's like, $10, extra large. I'm like, well, I don't want a large. So I said, you got a large? He's like, $10. Like, I'll give you five. Okay. And he literally gave me the shirt before I gave him money. And it was almost like, <laughs> yeah, it was a second of like, are run. you just giving this to me? Because you said it was your last. But I gave him the five. And then he's like, whips out a box. <laughs> he's got more shirts, you know, but it's the end of the night. So I did it at the end of the night because before you can't really haggle. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. So, sorry, I just thought that was, that, I was kind of proud. I was like, dude, I'll, I'll go and get a $5 shirt. All these fools <laughs> standing in line for a $35 t-shirt. Boom. $5. Okay. So, before the band started, uh, we missed the first opening band, but the second band was that guy, Yellow Wolf, right? Yeah. And I'm like, I didn't know who he was at first. He was just some dude, and I'm telling you, he is a, he is a never go. Whoa. I'm going to stand by this. Never go. Justin's if you see him, if you see his name rating. on a marquee, say, don't go, because he was the biggest giant douche ever on stage he was a like he was like the no shirt guy to the extreme like it was like he was like <laughs> the no shirt guy. yeah well here's the thing he was wearing a shirt took his shirt off because he's like look at all my tattoos and my muscles and that's cool whatever but then he like then he put a vest on for some reason and then he's wearing like a cowboy hat and i don't know he just seemed like he really seemed about himself and like i don't think anyone really cared but then he played like his song that was kind of like his hit song yeah which was that song too. Anyway, it was on the last episode of Sons of Anarchy. That's what I heard. I was like, oh, that's who this guy is. And then everybody kind of rushed like, oh, one hit. This is that one hit wonder song. I want to hear this. So everybody kind of rushed in was that to listen to him. <laughs> that was, I mean, that was it. But yeah, man, kind of a wiener, dude. Like, hey, and you know, if you're listening, give us a positive comment, dude. Yellow, <laughs> yellow uh, whatever his name is. And I was going to say yellow card, yellow wolf. <laughs> yellow Sorry, card. yellow cards are a good band. Little nice guys. Trump, Trump, trumpets <laughs> or no violins. Um, <laughs> so sorry. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. Not I don't know who that. picks like the, the opening bands. Like, I don't know if Deftones are like, Oh yeah, this guy's cool. I just didn't, I don't know. Sorry. And <laughs> yeah. I don't mean to put like just a bunch of hate on some guy's music and stuff, but I just wasn't into it, dude. And I was like, this guy's bugging me. So a no go, never go to yellow wolf. Never mark, go my, to mark my words. You know, if oh, I ever my, end up buying one marked. of his albums, remind me, go, why did you do that? Justin, They're, you said on episode 30, the anniversary. Your words have been marked. Yeah. I never had plans to. Yeah, because, man. All right, so <laughs> let's jump into the Deftones. I have not seen them since like 98, 99 Warp Tour. It's been the a while. one you and I went to. Yeah, 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 yeah Irvine. Yeah. So anyways, they were so good. Like, 
we was, we, was, we were talking earlier about an hour ago with your wife who was like, last time she's seen him, it hasn't been so good. Right. Um, just like, I'll say out the gate, the energy was great. They had good energy as a band. You know, like the bassists and guitarists are kind of just, you know. Jamming. Yeah, they're jamming. Not really, not really moving around a lot because that's just, I think, part of the technique and what they're doing. But, but Chino Marino, dude, like, he's got to be a dude that's up in his 40s now. I don't know where we're at on that scale, but yeah. they've been doing this since 88. So I imagine they were probably young teenagers when they started, you know, but uh, he had so much energy and he was so, he was so happy. He was so good with the crowd. He had good crowd response. Um, you know, a lot of like, oh, thanks for being here. Thanks. Thanks, Los Angeles. Like very appreciative. Yeah, he was appreciative. You know, at one point he came out with uh, from where I stood, it looked like he was either wearing a King's hat or a Raiders hat just for like one song for like digital bath. He like put it on. But um, yeah, it was good, man. They they, they sounded good. Uh, my friend Brian who I was with. He's like, he said the drummer was off the first couple songs. I was like, I could not tell. Hmm. But um, I will, you know, this tour is out for it was support for Gore, their newest right. their newest record. I don't know if you've listened to it yet. But I haven't personally. Yeah, I have. It's. I mean, I like the record. It's good. Um, I'll still say my favorite is White Pony, just because that that record is just good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, they. I think they've just been consistent in putting music out. I know they've had like ups and downs, and they lost their bass, their original bass player, and all that stuff. But um, it was for a support for like a new record. They played a really good mix of uh, songs from everything the only stuff they, they didn't play anything off their self-title from 03 huh. nothing that i can remember but they hit um stuff from diamond eyes uh around the fur there's a lot of songs from around the fur like their encore was around the fur it was like uh actually their encore was from adrenaline like their first 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 record yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but um yeah they had but yeah they um they played everything they played stuff from koi no you can you can Koi no yo can or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I, Saturday Night Wrist. Um, so yeah, they, they had a. It was like a good like. I wouldn't say greatest hits, but it was just like all the songs you want to hear. A good mixture. They played and then you know they threw in like maybe two, I feel like two songs from Gore. I don't, I can't, you know. But um, it was good, man. It was a good record. They ended it with um, engine number nine, but then they threw in that Cypress Hill. How can I could how I can just kill a man? You That's right. But uh, part of me. Okay, let's 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 side note this. Side note. Side, Didn't sidebar. Didn't Public Enemy have a song, I could, How I Could Just Kill a Man? Here's I don't think something so. I can't That's Cypress Hill. Maybe, okay. I don't know. Can Sorry. Something that I can't yeah, yeah, yeah. I, for some you reason, I thought that. Man. I feel like Chuck D sang that once, too. I could be off. I could be totally Maybe off. Maybe you're thinking of a live video you might have seen of Prophets of Maybe. Rage. <laughs> maybe recently. I don't know. Oh, I'll think about it. Because oh. Be Real and Chuck D are both doing that. Maybe, maybe that's thing. what I was thinking. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Anyways, but they played. They kind of added that on there with you know at, at their um on their encore so that was cool man it was a cool night I was like good show dude I I if you can still catch them it's a definite gotta go if you like the Deftones it's the gotta go if you just want to see a cool show man they had their light system situation was on point it was good it was um it might have been a I mean a lot of those acts tour with light lighting and yeah yeah it was just I mean and I'm not a big like lights and everything but it was cool I appreciated what good they did production value yeah it was a good production value it was good and again energy was there it's hard to jack that up at the Greek I've seen like every show I've seen it's just been like wow sounds great looks yeah. great it's just so good hands it was, down. Such a, it was such a good show and I can't I can't I went into it th- kind of having like, oh man, is Chino going to be like all weird and tired and like in a weird funk? But he was good, man. He seemed, again, he seemed like he had a lot of joy. He was happy. Good rapport. He, w- he kept talking to this dude. It seemed like he went on tour. He was like, oh yeah, man, I saw you in Fresno. I saw you in like, like I don't know, Alabama or something like that. He must have had like a groupie or not a groupie, but like some dude who just kind of follows him around. Yeah. Or maybe he's just a dude on the tour. I don't know. He's like, who works the tour? He's just there like, oh, now I'm, I'm not setting up. I can hang out. Uh, good show, man. Um, I can't say anything else that's about it because I had a good time. Except, what would be your rating? My rating is a gotta go. Okay, I said I thought I said gotta go. Maybe but I missed it. Maybe I, I missed have. it because I was talking a lot. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's just blah here's, blah here's, blah. Hey <laughs> blah. Hey, blah. So, one of my favorite songs by them is Pat, "The Passenger" mm-hmm. off of guess what? Just "Passenger." White Pony, but "Passenger." Sorry. Yeah. And um, on the record. Uh, you know Maynard Maynard from, James Keenan Maynard James Keenan yeah from uh, Tool Tool and Pussifer, Perfect Circle per- and per- per- Perfect Circle per- yeah you know all those bands <laughs> yeah all those bands I thought he was going to show up or whatever but he didn't and it sounded great without him but so to juxtapose how amazing it sounded 
to how terrible it smelled. Some dude like vomited. Oh, nice. Three rows behind me, onto his friend, and it was it just smelled terrible. There was a wave of like, what is that? Is that barf? Uh, first, it was like, was that a poop? Because it smelled really bad. But it was, it was anyways, not to gross anybody out. <laughs> it sucked, and it kind of lingered for the rest that's of the really show. That's really bad if your barf smells like poop. Yeah, dude. I, that's what I was thinking. I was like, at first, it was like, it, did someone take a dump? It was like, is that a fart? Did someone, did someone just let one go? And then it became like, then it became like, oh man, that's bad. And like, oh, maybe you did both. And then, oh, oh. gosh, I don't know. But it was like, I'm gonna turn around for a second and look, and you just like, oh, that's a mess back there. You know, it's. I, I was lucky. I was seriously, if I sat four more seats down to the right, if my ticket was, you know, I would have been splashed. So that's no. Anyways, it, geez, that that was kind of like you were praying for a, like yeah. a waft of. I was like, it, it, if it rained right now, yeah, 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 I know. I was telling Kelly earlier, smoke. I was hoping someone just lighted up right now so I could smell something instead Other of like, vomit. instead <laughs> of the vomit, because it was terrible. It was terrible. Um, but yeah, great record. I mean, sorry, great show, great tour. Go see them. I know I'm raving and ranting, but I just had it. I had such a good hey, time. When you have a great experience, you can yeah. talk about it. Yeah, it was good. And thank you again to Brian and Stacy. Had a good time. Yeah. Giving them a little listener. Listener. Listener love. Hey, guys. Listener love time. <laughs> it's time for listener love. Oh, yeah, baby. girl. Thanks for them tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, enough enough deaf tones, Kelly. Enough. Enough. So, tell me about you. Tell me a little bit about some things you've been watching, <laughs> some things you've been doing. Some things I've been watching yeah. and doing. Have you seen that Rogue One trailer, Kelly? Oh, oh snap. Yes. The second trailer. Yes, the second trailer. Oh, man. I'm even more excited now. Right. You like, know, I heard yeah, I've heard rumors that they're like, oh, they made them reshoot like sixty percent of whatever they shot. I don't care, man. This looks dope, right? And that last shot, hearing the Darth Darth Vader breath. Oh, uh, uh, sorry it, if you haven't seen it. Spoiler. Yeah, alert, sorry. But, spoilers. Darth Vader breath at the end. Little image of Darth Vader. Holy macaroni! Yeah, I I'm just so excited. I can't wait for December. Yeah, it's it's kind of weird. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know what? Every year having a Star Wars movie is good. Every year is a good thing. I think if they did more than two Star Wars movies a year, it would be bad. Um, you don't need that much Star Wars. I just love... There's that shot with the stormtroopers coming out of the water. Oh, yeah. That's freaking cool. That's like the it most... It all looks dope. That is the most heavy metal looking thing they have in that thing. Like, it just needs to be a... Then that dun, dun, rocket dun, dun, launcher dun, dun, shooting at the AT-AT. Oh, yeah. See? Dude. So much cool stuff, dude. Looks so dope. I don't know. Whatever they reshot or refilmed, I just trust them that it's going to be good. Um, this whole thing is going to be, it's kind of weird because you know it leads up to episode four, right? Right. So you kind of know like how it's going to end kind of, you know, but there's some cool stuff. Like there's like those black, like all black stormtroopers. They're not like tie pilots. Mm -mm. Oh man. So it does look crazy. It looks crazy. Awesome. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm very excited. I can say so many adjectives about this, (laughs) about this describing my i um, did read an interesting tidbit and you could dispel the rumors if they're not true because mm-hmm. you do what, a lot more research mm. but browsing through the facebook somebody posted an article saying that they casted donald glover as a young lando calrissian for the han solo movie uh movie yeah um i heard that too it's it's not confirmed okay. i think if they did brilliant good i think yeah. i think there's a that'd be good some good casting. there's a, i think you know there's a good likeness there you know, and he's obviously like a fan of that type of stuff. You know, he'll just have to start drinking some Colt Forty Five. Yeah, he's like lower, some Colt Forty Five. his voice a little hey. bit. Hey, <laughs> hey, yeah, that would be cool. I, I'm 100 percent up behind that casting if they do that. Donald Glover is of the nerdy vernacular kind. Um, that might be not, that may not be the right word, but well. he 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 comes from that cloth. Um, I know he just filmed some stuff in, in the new Spider Man movie, so. Um, he's actually a great rapper too yeah yeah oh dude Childish Gambino Childish Gambino check that out that's a guy to go right there check it out Childish Gambino you heard it here first if you've never heard it before yeah oh yeah so that that ad out walking through like wherever that island is (laughs) wherever that is wherever that place is it's just it's so cool it just looks so good there's so much so, so if you haven't seen the Rogue One trailer get on YouTube right now yeah go do it and and be excited about Star Wars and um, so I wanted to put this out here to you. So if there was more than one Star Wars movie a year, what do you think? Do you think that's too much? Like, oh man, or was one a year good? You know what? I'm of it because I'm like a Star Wars fan. Mm-hmm. 
I'm of the opinion that they could get away with one, like close in the time schedule a little bit. Yeah. Like one every eight months. Okay. But see, then that doesn't really work with like movie season because you have summer blockbuster and then fall, you know, your fall. Dude, blockbuster. there is no more summer blockbuster. It's like, that's true. you can have a blockbuster. That's the one thing I never understood. Like, I mean, I guess more people are around and able to go see the movies, but it's like, I think that if, as long as your movie's good, it's a blockbuster. That's true. Because the num- one of the number one movies of all time is like, regardless of how you feel, Avatar. Ugh. Yeah, it sucks. It's like, it's kind of weird, like this mark on humanity. It's the, it's the number <laughs> one. When can we knock it down? But it that came out Christmas time and it was like number one. Same thing with that Titanic thing. That came out around. <laughs> that Titanic, the Titanic thing. thing came out that around thing. New Year's Eve back then, back in like 1997 or whatever it was. And that thing was still at the top. So I just think if your movie's good and it's got some legs, it'll keep going. You know, it can be a blockbuster. But. Truth. So connected to that. I was reading something last week. I forget where I was reading it. I think it was like Collider or something like that. Forgive me if I'm wrong. The internet will correct you. (laughs) But uh, it was just talking about like the, it's just everything's expected to be a blockbuster. And I would agree because look what just came out about three weeks ago was Jason Bourne. Right. And people were kind of pumped on that and just kind of, it was a, it was a blip, you know? Yeah. It's gone. Like I didn't even see it because I was just like, oh man, I don't, I don't have eight. It's already out of the theaters? No, no, I mean, but I mean, it's come and gone, meaning like it's it's still there. You can still see it. I don't right. know where it ranks right now. Like Suicide Squad came out. That was what I was looking forward to. Right. And that hit number one for three weeks in a row, regardless of like. I feel like Bourne didn't have the 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 hype that Suicide Squad did. Not that it was even the hype, but Suicide Squad had like a whole year. Oh, yeah. To, to really ramp up attention. Mm-hmm. I didn't know there was another Jason Bourne movie until like a month or less before it came out. Yeah. So when you have that kind of tension and build, you're kind of like, Oh, finally. Yeah. Okay, cool. But now that like the Jason Bourne movie barely had like any publicity other than a few commercials here and there. Yeah. And it was like real close to release time. You kind of don't have, not to say that you don't have anything to be excited about, but yeah, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it didn't do well. It's like number eight right now. Um, and I think it's like totals. Um, I'm not sure what the totals are. I'm not going to really look it up, but um, it's not, it's not doing what it, I think people wanted just like ghostbusters, you know, they thought that was going to do well and it didn't. So it's kind of like, eh, we're going to put this back on the shelf and, and revisit. So you heard the, our review of ghostbusters. Yeah. You heard our review I mean, of ghostbusters. You know. Sorry, Delon. <laughs> Delon's like, I, I strenuously disagree with your thoughts on that movie. Um, and then Ben Hur, that movie just came out. That was like, first off, I don't know who the heck was in that movie. Like, can you name an actor in Second that movie? Second of all, why would you redo why, why something would you that do was Ben Hur? Cl- it was a classic from back yeah. in the day. Leave it alone. Like, let it be a classic. And, like the Ghostbusters. Hello. <laughs> like, here's the thing with Ben Hur. It's like, what? Why? So I'm Who's be clamoring if they do for Ben Hur? And they maybe do another Goonies movie. I'm going to be pissed. I oh, know. If if they do another Goon, another another Goonie movie, it better just have the original cast in it. Right. That's the only way I'll watch it. But I'm still kind of like, you don't have to. You don't. Nothing. Everything doesn't have to be serialized. Some things just need to be a one off. and Let it be. Same thing. Like remember they were rumored, oh Ferris Bueller's gonna come back. I'm like, no, no, I don't want to see Matthew Broderick again because he's a wiener now. Right. He was great in that pocket of time, and that's it. But don't don't go back to it. But there was a Broderick era. It was a Broderick era, and it, it consisted of that and and that alone. There was nothing else that worked with it. He was it, and then Bloxy Blues, and that's it. Maybe War <laughs> Games. Maybe War Games. But other than that, but what yeah, Ben Hur. What was the other one with the, him and the monkey? That was War Games. Oh. oh no, no, that was Project X. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. So okay, maybe there was like three or four movies he did good. In. <laughs> so what was about that other one? Well, I'm just yeah. kidding. Yeah, but anyways, Ben Hur. Sorry, Ben Hur. Like, no one in that movie besides Morgan Freeman has a name. And, yeah, it just, I don't know. You can't put a no-name, like, lead movie in August and expect it to make money. Right. Unless it was, it wasn't even marketed well. I couldn't tell you a thing about that movie. Like, oh, chariots. So. Yeah, if you sorry, got a classic, why, why? Yeah, I mean, it's, there's nothing about revisiting a classic. But, like, if you, you sometimes you need a name. Sometimes you don't need a name. I don't right. know. I think it just needs to be marketed well. And if people are like, man, that movie just wasn't good. I feel you. But sorry. I think critics reviewed it well, but it's, sorry, rant just kind of got 
I was basically talking about how much everything has to be a blockbuster, right? Yeah. Like everything. So to make a blockbuster, you spend usually you spend like two hundred fifty million dollars to make this movie, right? So if you don't make that money back, it's kind of oh, it's a failure. So, like, let's say say Suicide Squad, if they maybe probably costing two hundred fifty million dollars to make that movie, if they would have like lowered it all because we didn't need this crazy like effects like laden at the end blah 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 it was a little smaller like a little more black ops i think people would watch it i mean people did watch it i mean it's still number one for like three weeks but like i think it could have been stronger like it could have been more personal not so giant the stakes don't always have to be high i think the stakes to be more personal and people will still enjoy it make it smaller have a smaller budget like deadpool 56 million dollars whatever the heck that budget was made all this money so it's actually a true true blockbuster because it's like tripling its budget bang bang anyways rant over <laughs> rant, rant over ended. sorry guys just wanted to like chat a little bit at you i did notice that there's like a, a a couple like horror movies coming out oh dude did you hear about rings it's oh, like the ring like but the it's ring rings sequel. yeah it's about that crazy like there's don't a blind... yeah sure <laughs> i don't know it looks scary yeah, yeah. it's just like it there it's getting or on the commercial it's saying like one of the yeah, people, people are saying one of the scariest movies in a long time. Or people whatever. are saying it's really good. I, I listened to a podcast the other day and the guy talked about how he saw it. And he was like, he said it was good. He said it wasn't a horror movie, but it was suspense. like a thriller. Like a thriller. He was like, I don't know why people are calling it a horror, but he's all, it's, it was really good. And um, yeah, we need to probably jump on that one. Yeah. I want to see, also, I wanted to see uh, War Dogs. That looks I heard cool. that was funny. I heard it was funny. It looks great. It's, it just, you know, doesn't have a shot, you know. And it's probably it's probably really good. Yeah, I think it'll get. I think it'll get. Uh, well, it came out last week, right? Did it? Yeah, it came out. Uh, it already came out. Oh well. So. Psh. Yeah, I'm way out of touch, man. Anyways, looks like some good stuff coming up. Yeah. Um, but I mean, yeah. we're about to head into that season. We're about of, to like, new yeah, stuff coming Halloween out. and horror movies. So, oh, that, yeah. like I said, I uh, saw more than two, but I, for the <laughs> for the life of me, I can't remember what some of them were, but. Anyway, neither here nor there. Some good stuff will be coming out. And then, like, in the TV shows will start coming out again. And, like, Walking Dead will oh, be coming out again. Walking Dead in October. Yeah. Well, Fear of the Walking Dead started last started week. Started back up again, yeah. Um, watched lied, the, I, I just actually watch watched it. watched the first episode. Well, the first episode back. Um, just watched it this afternoon. And, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's keeping me entertained. I'm not saying it's, like the greatest thing ever it's keeping me entertained it's it's interesting because <sighs> first episodes back though they're not meant to like yeah but i'm just saying it's interesting how it hasn't it's not a phenomenon like walking dead is like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna call my friends over and we're gonna watch this yeah for sure for sure this is kind of like oh it'll hold me over it's it's interesting um it's weird like walking dead man if i miss it i'm gonna buy it on on, on itunes and watch it because i don't want to miss it this one, I'm just, I don't care. I, it's so, I don't know why, man. I'm not, and I'm not saying it's bad. You know what? I, I also, sorry, sidebar, hmm. uh, not sidebar, just slight tangent, yeah. but sausage party. Did I, you see it? No, I did not see it, but I heard uh, a review from uh, Wolf Bone here, a friend of mine. Hmm. Uh, he said the last 15 minutes, he did not stop laughing. Really? I heard like, it was funny. Absolutely hilarious. I heard it was funny. It's, it's like a time thing. I don't have time. Like we can go right now, probably. Yeah, let's go. Could we can end, maybe. And go and go see that. Maybe and sneak into another movie. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We wouldn't do that. No, nope. we'd support the arts. But you know. <laughs> hey, who we would support? We the would arts. support the arts. Crickets. But uh, I heard. Yeah, I heard it was funny. I heard it was good. Like a good fun time. Yeah. Sorry. I also heard people took their kids and I was like, oh, because it looks that like is a, a terrible idea. It looks idea. like a cartoon. I, mean, I get hard. it, but I mean. Read, yeah, folks. Read. Do some research, and then you look know, I, at the rating. Like, I, I, I put it, it on, rated R. Yeah, I put it on the responsibility of like the parent or the grandparent. It's usually like a grandparent. I took my kids to see the hot dog movie, and it was, you know. <laughs> the other part is like the ticket guy, like ticket guy, ticket girl. Say, hey, maybe like, are you hey, sure? Are you sure because it's it's rated R, and you have a seven year old with you? Oh, oh, it's rated R, but. It's a hot dog it's cartoon. A cartoon. It, yeah, it's it's it. It's <laughs> yeah, probably it's euphemism. Really inappropriate. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so don't take your kids to see Sausage Party, but take yourself. Yeah, if you want, if you want to laugh, if you want to laugh, take yourself. And you have a, a based on on Jeff's humor. Uh, 
Or are we leaving his identity secret? No, you can say you said it. <laughs> if you want to listen to what Jeff Wolf says, go see Sasha's party. Do it. The last 15 minutes, he didn't stop laughing. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the poster. That's on the that's on the, the commercial <laughs> on TV. <laughs> Jeff Wolf said. <laughs> From Arizona. Okay. Nonstop hilarity. <laughs> Nonstop hilarity. All right. That's all I got right now, Kelly Cairns. Yeah, I think I think this one's going to be a little bit shorter. A little that's short, about all I got. That's good. It's a good one, right? Yeah. So if you want to contact us, let us know. Again, I'm going to mention to the bands again, if you got a band and you want us to check you out, send us an email. Yeah. Let's go cast at gmail.com. Or you can hit us up on Twitter at Let's Go Cast. Or Instagram, Let's Go Cast. Or Facebook.com slash Let's Go Cast. Basically, Let's Go Cast Let's Go everywhere. Cast everywhere. Wherever, wherever you are, that's where we are. That sounds like go. a great slogan for a business. I don't know. Where wherever you be. are is where we are. That would be my <laughs> mobile Wi-Fi business. Wherever you are, we are. Mobile I Wi-Fi. like it for our, our podcast. Maybe we wherever, can, we, no. eh, wherever, wherever, you are. Like, wherever you are, we're in California. <laughs> we're not too far behind. <laughs> that, should be, that should be our slogan. <laughs> wherever you are, we're in we're California. In California. <laughs> Wanting to be by you. Let's go cast. <laughs> Dot com. I'm Justin. I'm Kelly. Let's go. Let's go.